is the value of human life? Does it exist in the mind or the body? And what is considered the end? Most of us accept that the end of human life occurs when a person's biological functions terminate and their body is buried under the ground. We mourn and it's considered the final farewell. But there is something that makes us reconsider this answer and think again about the true meaning of our existence. Where does the value exist in the people that we love whose mind has become devoid of memories? Those whose physical body pulsates with life but is left helpless in a chair or a bed, in a care home or a hospital, unable to recognize their loved ones or remember the beautiful memories they gathered over decades and even the skills, hobbies and education they spent their entire life acquiring. Those who were unable to comprehend their existence or appreciate our presence around them, we look at them with an eye of sympathy, but also fear that one day we may be sitting in their position. Dementia has left us puzzled because with it, a person hangs between life and death. They're stuck completely in the middle between the life as we know it and the slow termination of cognitive functions. Allow me to explain dementia using the tree of life as a simplified example. Human life births like a seed, growing day by day, forming a trunk, branches and twigs to become a mature evergreen tree. It grows old, progressing through seasons and years, exactly like human life. With every memory and experience, a leaf grows, taking its place on branches that are linked with other leaves, holding our emotions like love and happiness. Our childhood memories are held by the larger branches near the trunk. Our youth by the leaves in the middle, and our most recent memories by the weakest branches and leaves at the very top of the tree. Dementia comes by without warning, like a violent windstorm rocking this tree from side to side with no mercy. The weakest branches and leaves representing our short-term, almost recent memories are the first to fall. But those holding our emotions don't give in easily to the wind. This means that what a dementia patient thinks of as their most recent memory is actually from an earlier stage of their life. The types of memories to fall first are those generated and stored in a region of the brain known as the hippocampus, and it is the first to be damaged by dementia. The amygdala, on the other hand, in which our emotions are stored, is more resistant to dementia, and its contents remain safe for longer. Therefore, a patient with dementia may not remember who you are, but kind acts towards them will bring back feelings of love and happiness. The windstorm, like dementia, does not form a normal part of the tree's life. It results in physical damage that is visible to us. We only need to look at an Alzheimer's brain to confirm this reality. A diseased brain can shrink as much as 25% compared to a healthy brain, and a protein called amyloid beta plays a central role in the shrinkage. Amyloid beta is produced naturally in the brain but excess production or a failure in its clearance can result in the death of brain cells. Eventually, the dementia windstorm will leave the tree bare, with no leaves, branches or life, and only a neglected trunk. This trunk will be unable to recognize itself, but those around it will remember that this trunk was once an evergreen tree full of life, its branches dancing in the wind and a home to other life forms. The statistics are truly frightening. Dementia, of which Alzheimer's is the most common type, affects 48 million people worldwide. This value is expected to double every 20 years, and one in three of you sitting here today is at risk of developing it. Dementia also has a huge economic impact, and the cost of care in the US alone is expected to reach $1 trillion this year. Dementia research also receives 12 times less funding compared to cancer, even though it kills just as many people. Believe it or not, despite its discovery 114 years ago, if you were diagnosed with Alzheimer's today, you cannot be offered any treatment to cure or even slow down the progression of the disease. 
It is my passion and life goal to change this reality for Alzheimer's. As a scientist, I hope to determine what triggers the disease and the therapies needed to change it by investigating why the amyloid beta protein accumulates and what changes in the brain contribute to failure in its clearance. I'm also not alone. In the UK, the first Dementia Research Institute was set up by the Medical Research Council and the charities Alzheimer's Society and Alzheimer's Research UK with a joint investment of £290 million to carry out research on the disease. Bill Gates, whose father was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, donated $100 million to help find a cure. And the Chan Zugerberg Initiative aims to support dementia researchers to do the same. But it isn't the role of scientists alone that will lead us to defeat Alzheimer's. The first step to defeating it is for all of us to understand that Alzheimer's is not a natural part of ageing and that something can be done. We can also help create a dementia-friendly society that is more understanding, welcoming and inclusive of those living with dementia through our knowledge of the symptoms and how they can be managed. By embracing their reality, we can help them to live well with dementia. The Dementia Friends Initiative, for example, encourages people to make a positive change to those living with dementia by giving them a better understanding of the disease and inspiring them to take action. So please feel free to contact me about such volunteering opportunities. Time has not brought a cure, and I strongly believe that the secret to finding it lies in the power of interdisciplinary research. Research that fully integrates neuroscience with physics, engineering, innovative technologies and other similar disciplines. And by this, I reinforce the idea that it isn't scientists alone that will help find a cure. By joining the fight against dementia, you are not only fighting for the sake of your loved ones, but you are also fighting to protect yourself from a devastating disease in the future. I will leave you with a final message. Human life has infinite value, but we decide how far we take it. Great achievers who achieve their full potential are never forgotten. They go on living even after their death. Even the neglected tree trunk becomes an icon of a wonderful life, a life that we continue to live, carrying with us the memories of those that left us and new ones that we create every day. Thank you.